All right. This is Randalicious. Welcome to the 33rd Hexes podcast. And I'm going to start trying to do time stamps. So, you know, I, I think it would increase the quality of the viewing experience. Uh, you know, in the description, it'll show you what we're talking about at what point in time. Watch what you want to watch, then fuck the rest. If that is what you want. But. Let's get it going. I'm Randalicious, and I'm the leader of Hexus. I'm Trance. I'm a general in Hexus. Aubrey, getting close to uh, the Bronze Star in Hexus. Okay, I'm Homeworld. And for all you out there, my Twitter is good. Don't say anything bad. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, you need a lot of practice. <laughs> I'm trying. And no, I will not max. I'm Brain Soldier, creator of the number one old school RuneScape Twitch bot, uh, Bot Test, aka Link's Bot. Dollar sign porn wheel category. <laughs> and I'm Rick on the other golden man. Alright, so I recently made a video. In that video, um, well, first, I had a poll on Twitter, and it was kind of like an approval poll where people voted in um, their approval of mods. There was about 300 or so votes for every single mod, whether it was positive or negative. But in that, you know, we were able to see kind of like what a really small bias sample size thinks about the J mods. Uh, do, do you agree with the results of what it was, and what is your opinion about how people voted? You know, it was just how I expected it to be. Modash being at the top, Archie and Ronan being at the bottom, obviously. Uh, yeah, and now just the way I thought it would be. Um, really? if, if by agree you mean what I expected, yes, I expected Ash. To be number one and Archie slash Ronin to be the, the bottom. Um, <laughs> I don't think you guys realize how biased this is. Hey, yeah, the, it's, like it's that, only that's... people on Twitter, and it's only people who follow Randy, <laughs> one of the biggest <laughs> criticizers of the J Mod team. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So like, it, 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 giant grain of salt. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> But did you agree with it? Like, would you put Ash at number one? Would you put Ronan and Archie as last A and last B? Um, uh, definitely Ash number one. I don't. I don't know about the others. Yeah, you know, I gave my opinion during the whole thing, uh, the video that I made. I was. It was just something that I felt like doing, kind of seeing what a very biased selection of people had to say. Uh, I was, I pretty much expected the results to be what they were. Maybe I expected Alfred to be a bit higher than what he was, and Weth to be lower than what he was. But for the most part, I was really not surprised at all the way that people voted. Um, I didn't think Ash was going to be as high as he was, though. Uh, I think he had a 93% approval rating. That is fantastic. Like, yes, it is a very a 300 sample size of people who only – very, very select amount of people. But I think, in my opinion, the way that the people voted reflects well on the quality of – like, regardless – how biased you want to say the selection was if a j mod was doing a great job they would be getting higher approval ratings regardless who it is i think so ash absolutely number one archie absolutely the worst yeah i thought, I thought it was pretty interesting it's nice to see those results actually like laid out in terms of the numbers i wasn't really surprised by anything that much so I, I was kind of surprised that Maz scored as low as she did, because I think that Maz is one of the best mods. She's kind of behind the scenes, but I think she does a really, a really good job. Um, yeah, it was interesting to see that. It would be interesting to see a larger poll to like the general community, if people could do that on Reddit, but I don't know if that would be something that would be allowed. I don't know if Reddit is really unbiased either, though. Uh, yeah, I looked through them, I voted on all of them, and I agree with pretty much everything there. 
I guess the one thing is that I don't agree with Ronan finishing above Archie. I think recent events have shown that uh, as useless as Archie's job is, at least he does it, like what's required of him. Ronan, not so much. It was an interesting video for sure. You talking about seeing if they would kind of pull it to a larger public. I don't really think that's something that they'd want to do. Yeah, I don't think the uh, team would do it. They definitely I, wouldn't want to. I think they'd Absolutely be. I, I think they'd be scared to know what their approval ratings are. Like it would just make Archie feel like shit <laughs> more than he already does. <laughs> Man, but yeah, I don't really think that'd be something that they would do. But you know, I think that they should have like job evaluate, like a yearly job evaluation of the mods. You know, I, is what it is. But all right. Moving on, so really big news in the high-level skilling community is um, Mini Finbar was the leader of Solus. He's now resigned, and AJ is now the leader of Solus. You know, what do you guys think about that situation? Um, I. I'd rather see AJ as leader of Solus than Finbar. I was never really a big fan of Finbar. Kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. But, uh, yeah, I think AJ is a solid guy. We've been both training the same skill, doing the same method, and he uh, seems like a pretty good skiller. So, seems like a reasonable guy. I've watched some of the podcasts and his streams. So, sounds good to me. Well, I guess the real surprising thing is isn't that he resigned, it's that he burnt out. Because given that he burnt out, uh, him resigning makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I agree that I think AJ will be a better leader, and you know, maybe I'll even start watching Sola's podcasts. Uh, I'm really surprised. Um, I don't really... He quit for uh, RS3 Iron Man. I, don't, I really don't see the appeal of RS3 Iron Man and why you'd like, leave everything old school behind. Just to play that, um, did someone else in Solus like join him? Um, Dreamscape. Dreamscape. Uh, Jen is about to be leaving for RS3 Iron Man, and I think what? It's yeah. like a plague. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Tails did it a while ago too. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. You know, a uh, lot, lot of people in Solus RS3 Iron Man, but yeah. R3 Iron Man still has dailies, I don't get it. Fuck dailies. They know it R3 Iron Man, guys. Dude, all I gotta say is thank God. <laughs> I hated listening to him, I hated everything about him, thank God. Yeah, his voice pissed me off so much in the podcast. And the fact that he corrected oh. everyone. Is what they said, couldn't stand it. He's never done anything wrong to me, Minifin Bob, but it did shock me that he, uh, quit old school to go and play RS3 Iron Man. AJ, he's a uh, cool guy, spoke with him a few times on the TeamSpeak. Seems like he'd be good under the role of leadership and I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, um, you know something that was kind of funny is Finbar, maybe half joking, maybe half seriously said before the Skilling Cup that if they lost that he would resign. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, like, the, the last, um, like, month he's just spent um, in Nightmare Zone. And I think that for him, I mean, you, as ignorant as it sounds, I think that for him it was kind of like, all right, I'm getting pretty damn burnt. But if we win the Skilling Cup, it's all going to be good. And he also then, lost rank 2 Slayer. Yeah, yeah, like, Lingier. that, like, losing a lot of motivation. So... I can really see why that happened. Uh, very happy that it did happen. I remember I told AJ back in January, I said that AJ was the leader that Solus deserved. So I'm glad to see that that is actually happening. Uh, I think that he can take Solus to a new level. He's got a great foundation to build upon. And yeah. It's, uh, I think he'll do real well. And the clan, it, the clan is looking up. Alright, so, talking about leaders resigning, it, if I were to resign, 
um, as the leader of Hexus, either by burning out for RS3 Iron Man or what have you. Um, wh what do you guys, what kind of impact do you think it would have on the clan, and who do you think would kind of replace me? Well, I don't know what kind of impact it would have, but who would replace you? I would say either Jiklum or Aubrey would suit the job. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you clean out my ears. Wait, say that again. Sorry. He's not I even a gen. Who did you say? Uh, oh, <laughs> hold on a say? minute. Okay, then I'll say Trickle. Sorry. Uh, Alright. <laughs> I heard the question wrong. Um, I think people would want me to be leader, but I wouldn't <laughs> want it, so. Yeah, that's what I expected. <laughs> I wouldn't want it. I've not been in the clan long enough to know what kind of effect it would have on the clan of Randalicious leaving, but if Randalicious did leave, I would probably pick King Bino. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say Trance, but seeing that he doesn't want it, I guess I'd go with Gang. Not sure how Trickle would do as a leader. Uh, yeah, Trance is like the most likely candidate, but I figured that he probably wouldn't want to do it. Um, and I guess either Gang or Clayton. I don't know how Clay uh, how active Clayton is. Um, but yeah, probably Gang. If we have like a vote, I guess that's probably who I'd vote for. It's too much of an XP waste for Trance. Yeah. <laughs> And then all you gotta do is like a, a little bit of agility and make the updates that you need to do. Um, I I don't really know what kind of impact it would have. It'd be hard to pre kind of predict. Um, I wouldn't appoint anyone as a leader or anything like that. Not I I, I have no plans of leaving anytime. So um, any rumors about that? Not sure. I think it'd be better to make it an oligarchy, honestly. <laughs> I don't know, I can't see any of the generals being the leader. It's weird. Yeah. No, no. I, I, honestly, I don't see any of the gens that strike me as being assertive enough to want to be the yeah. man. <laughs> uh, I feel, because I feel like they're all perfect in their position right now. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be weird. It would have some sort of, like, <clears throat> you know, republic... Democratic Republic, where people people <laughs> vote on everything. <laughs> Republic of Texas. Hashtag make Texas great again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and we Texas vote already for is a new great. And like campaign and shit. Oh, that, hey, and that like, that would like be that would be fun to watch. That, that <laughs> hey, that would be fun to watch. Texas presidential debates. That, or the, that, the the Twitch chat has to vote. Yeah, yeah, the Twitch chat has to vote. The best source. Oh, <laughs> Uh, we should do this. We should do this. Uh, maybe uh, when I'm dead. Maybe the next me. gen will have to go through this process. We could just have a, like a voted in figurehead, Prince of Hexus. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fun. All right. Um. So a topic that we had many 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 podcasts ago was what top page player do you think will burn out next i remember on that question i said it would be nerd and he was in the chat and he got kind of offended about that but he ultimately ended up burning out and i was right with that so who do you guys think if you want to take any kind of guess who do you think is the next top page player to burn out if you had to guess um i'm looking at the top page right now People towards the bottom, I don't really know that much about, but Scott Wilson is always like on and off, so I think he's going to be pretty inactive for Dead Man seasonals. I'm not exactly sure; he might just be AFK, but like he burned for a while and just doing like COD or something. I think came back. I don't know if I would say like just given the fact that he comes and goes, comes and goes. For me, that wouldn't be like a yeah. Like I don't know if that counts as burning, but I can't think of anyone else. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm gonna take another shot in the dark out here, but this, um, this one's gonna be Vior. 
Oh, yeah. going for two for two. That's a risky, <laughs> risky bet. I'm going to try to bat a thousand here. I'm, Vior is my pick for the next burnout. Um, I definitely have to say, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's like Ridge on Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The guy's just a total noob. Uh, yeah. My pick. Um, let's see here. I'm going to pick Zulu. And the reason is, is because I have access to the Slay Stars team speak, and I see him in there playing H1Z1 all the time. Well, I mean, he's got 200 mil all banked. I don't think he'd burn out. He'd probably go faster if you put more motivation into it, but he doesn't have it. He already has it banked? Yeah. Jesus. Well, I mean, at Khan and Prayer, and that's kind of like almost everything. Like half of it at most, isn't it? Uh, something ridiculous, like 5 to 5.5. 5. Yeah. Isn't it like 10 bill or so to get by Apple's now, though? I think it's like 9. Not really sure, actually. He's got what it takes. So I think uh, a realistic answer would be one of the people near the bottom, but my 8-ball told me it would be Randy, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, then. I'm probably saying anyone near the bottom of the top page, too, but I don't really keep my eyes on the top page. It's one of my methods of playing this game stress-free, is to not know who's behind me or who's in front of me. All right, it's talking about burnouts. What is a player, a friend of yours, or any a friend of yours, uh, or someone you looked up to, or anything like that, who burnt out, who you wish hadn't? I'm gonna go with Lord Aris. He used to be in this clan a few years ago. One of the players who motivated me to play somewhat efficiently. I remember seeing him with an RC cape like really early on. Yeah, seemed he seemed like from, such a badass. He was a top five player for a long time, but then yeah. uh, he prioritized real life and took that instead and quit. I say definitely sick nerd. It would have been nice to see him um, compete with Lynx and see how far he could go. He went as far as he could. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pick somebody. He's got a real close name to mine. Homepage. What? I wish he would have continued on. I don't know why he burnt, but I still talk to him from time to time, and he won't tell me. How do you talk to him? In game. Still oh, logs on. Oh. He does like competition <clears throat> and stuff and all that. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jerry. Um, I met him like a year and a half ago when he was in. He was in Solus when I met him. I think was he ever in Hexus? I don't think he was. Yeah, he was. Fuck. Well. And he quit for RC Iron Man, and I heard he's actually hasn't been playing that for the past week or two recently. So I don't know, I don't know what's up. I got to talk to him. It's like the original RS3 Iron Man burnout. Did he burn out of the RS3 Iron Man? He was rank one on that for a while. No, like burn out of old school to do RS3 Iron Man, which is becoming a trend. But anyways, uh, it would be interesting to see what John C would have done like after Max if he kept playing. Uh, also wish Asus Soul would make videos. He's playing a lot, but he hasn't made a video in forever. Burnt from YouTube, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. I'm trying to think here. I might have to take the easy answer and also go with Sick Nerd, just because I think that he still would be rank 1 EHP and rank 1 overall. Um... There's no competing with Lynx, but I would have liked to see realistically how long he would have been able to take him to hold him off for. Alright. So, on Q&A, they hinted that their next big engine job would be in-game clans. Um, you know, I didn't watch it, so I didn't hear this. But when do you guys think the in-game clan system actually really has a chance of coming in? 
I'm not sure. I think... Did they talk about it at RuneFest? No, I don't think so. If so, then they might put it, push it back to after RuneFest, because they want to get all the updates that they talked about at RuneFest done before the next RuneFest. I don't know. Hopefully it's soon, but I can't see it being a priority over things like, you know, say a Batch 2 and other shit. Deadman Seasonals and say a Batch 2 seem to be taking up, like, all of the time recently. Um, I think, I think they're gonna do it after the Zaya raids. Because Zaya, Zaya raids is the next batch of Zaya, right? Or is there something else before? Yeah, not that. Yeah, right. it's like PVM shit, including raids. Yeah, I think they're gonna do that first, because they both require engine work. And I think they'll do Zaya raids, and I think, um, early next year clans, like next January, my prediction. Early yeah, maybe January. if they do a clan cup, they'll try to have it done for the next clan cup. Uh, yeah, I also think it'll be uh, sometime after the next Zaya batch. I think it's interesting they say it's a big engine job. We keep hearing about engine jobs, but I want to. I'd like to know what they're actually doing with Preach. the engine. Like we never hear what Ian's actually working on, so I'd like to hear something on that. Yeah, you hit the. You hit that perfectly, you know. I mean, I think I think Ian's probably one of the hardest working J mods. The, the engine's probably one of the most complicated and fucked up things with old school, like. And he's the only person. There's probably like five, like three people in the world who know how to work on their old school engine, and it's it's Ian and his two brothers. So, I think we need to be thankful for him. What did they do, like, back in 2007, though? They must have had more than one person working on the engine. I don't see why they can't train somebody, even if it would take a while. I feel like it would be a worthwhile investment. Yeah. A lot more than a... Uh, another artist, I'd say. Yeah. Did we talk about on the last podcast that Alfred was leaving? Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering. Um, you know, I, I, I'd expect it to happen sometime during the summer. Uh, I expect it to be by September for sure. That is optimistic. I, you know what? I expect greatness. So I don't know why, but I'm very optimistic when it comes to getting shit done. Okay. Your hopes too high. <laughs> time and time again, I am disappointed. But time and time again, I'm optimistic for better results. Sorry, another thing on the Q&A was that Matt K said they were going to make changes to the Dead Man tournament to make it more solo friendly. Do you really have any faith that the team can make the necessary changes to make it solo friendly? And what are your thoughts on these dead man tournaments in general well i thought dead man was stupid before it came out i thought it was stupid when it came out i still think it's stupid and i think this tournament's stupid <laughs> and um no i have no faith in them whatsoever to make it solo friendly i have no clue how they'd even attempt to do that like they'd have to change the way the whole game mode works so no i don't see anything good coming out of this um, there's really no way of making it solo friendly. You're gonna get bodied by a clan ten times out of ten. There's no escape. It's it's clan man mode. It's dead as fuck. All of dead man is shit. Exact same opinion as yours. It's been shit the entire time. Wasting ten thousand dollars on a damn tournament. Just giving ten thousand dollars to rot and not even bothering trying to get some Australian servers or anything like that. Yeah, where's our skill and cup money? <laughs> yeah, there is there's nothing that they can do to make it not a clan man mode. And an early congratulations to Rot on your 10k. Yeah, I I really don't see them actually finding a way to make it fair. Like I really can't see people who aren't involved in ROT having any kind of chance in the long term. Um, which is just kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's the way the game is, and they would have to make such significant changes to the game mechanics to make it 
not clan man mode that it would hardly even be recognizable most likely um and yeah i don't know dead man was good at the first like month or so because it brought so much attention to the game but i don't think that just offering money for people to play it is the right way to revive it they need to actually make it so that people want to play it for the sake of playing it not for the sake of making money out of it um so they need to change the mechanics make it so that people actually want to come back because once people die and lose all their shit and all their stats they quit and that's just how it is um there's really no way to make it solo friendly um at the end of the day you're gonna have uh raw and maybe like one or two other groups of people who yeah it's a free-for-all but they're not going to be attacking each other so they they have a serious advantage um if any of those 25 members of like rot or or whoever's team wins, then they, then that whole team wins because they split it. So I really don't see how they can make a solo friendly unless they like give you one versus one matchups um, throughout the whole uh, tournament, which is not going to happen. I don't think. I think that man mode is irreversibly dead. It was fun at the start, but now I think it's time to close the door and fucking nail it shut. <laughs> Yeah, they. We we see that the uh, Darkscape, de- the Dead Man of RS three, is getting closed down. Like it's shit. Like the game mode was set up to fail, and you know everyone. I thought Darkscape was designed better than Dead Man in general too. It had more players. Like they they need to they need to accept defeat and just move on. You know, like, you win some, you lose some, but this one you lost before you started. Alright, so, again, I don't really watch the Q&A, so I don't really know much about this question here, but someone who submitted this topic said that, what are your guys' thoughts on the Q&As turning more and more into Meme Central, saying that it used to be a good platform to get questions and answers, but nowadays it's just turned into a toxic meme-stration. Well, I haven't been watching the Q&As for a while, Um, pretty much for this reason. I remember about a year ago, or maybe a bit further back, they were interesting. They actually discussed good topics, and um, they were also hosted better when Ronan was there, by the way. But, um, yeah, in recent times, I feel like every single Q&A session is the exact same thing. Like the, there's no variety in the questions that they, an- that they answer. There's no variety in the answers they give. And their memes are fucking terrible. <laughs> Agreed. If they hired a competent meaner, a memer instead of Ronan, then maybe. Bowl cut LMAO. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen every Q&A since the first one, like, two and a half years ago, when it was just Ash, Reach, and uh, Matt K on the old Red good old, Good old days of that casting couch. <laughs> 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 and um, I, I have nothing better to do than to to listen to the Q and A for an hour a week because there's um, even though it's kind of cringy at times, they still talk about um, what they're doing in the future. I mean, like three, there's three or four questions in this podcast that I only thought of because they talked about it on the Q and A, um, like the stuff with the clans. So I mean, it's worth watching for me. I find it highly unprofessional that they um, use memes in the Q&A. Not only do they use memes in the Q&As, but they have also added it to RuneScape itself, that being Zaya. And I find it cringe and, again, highly unprofessional, and that shit needs to stop. Yeah, no, I still watch all the Q&As. I mean, it's an hour. I, I'm looking for shit to entertain me while I'm playing RuneScape, so it's something still worth watching to me. And there's still decent amount of information covered, but I think that the quality has definitely dropped recently. Kind of just, like, how much can you really talk about when you're doing a Q&A every single week and there isn't really that much happening in the game? Um, I don't know. So, it's not terrible, but they're... I don't really know if it's as bad as they're making it out to be. It's still worth watching or listening to, in my opinion, but it's a little bit worse than it was. Man, for me, like... 
Archie absolutely ruined the Q&As for me. Ronan did a adequate job at hosting the Q&As, and I refuse to watch any of the Q&As now just because Archie has such a dominant role in it, and he really has no business doing so. Uh, yeah, the simpler times back when it was Ash, Reach, and Matt K. I think Matt K is the best host for the Q&As. Um, you know, I think that we need to somehow, some way, force Archie off of hosting it and let Matt K or even Ronan regain control of hosting the Q&As. How about we force him off the team altogether? I, hey, you got you got to fight one more at a time. You know, okay, I just want I just want to say that they ruined Zay with all these memes. I can't stand it, and I don't watch the Q&As because of the memes. They just drive me nuts. Yeah, it is. I the real Q&A is on Ash's Twitter. <laughs> I remember, uh, like, I used to, uh, back in the simpler times, I would be so happy. Every Thursday night, I'd come home from school and listen to the... Q and A and what had happened and it was it was a great listen every every single time and it's just really disappointing to see how it how it has evolved into complete utter shit. Yeah, it's kind of more like a community event now than it used to be. Much more informative and just you know like mm. straight to the facts, not so much like entertainment value. Yeah, that I liked better. Absolutely. Okay, uh, but um, I will say that um, the success of the old school Q and A's, I'm like that had a lot to do with like there's like a whole department at Jagex that handles streaming and like like RuneScape three never I don't think RuneScape three ever streamed shit before the old school team streamed their Q and A's. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember ever seeing an RS three. I guess it wasn't RS three at the time, like way back when. But I'm like. Um, yeah, I think like, you're right. Like they never had that room. Like they just they just like brought a couch into the corner of their office and did the original Q and A's. Like it wasn't until that that started being a success and they realized how many thousands of people watched the streams that it was actually worth investing in like a department uh, at Jagex just for streaming. So that's interesting. All right. So next, uh, with clans being so dominant like Hexus, like Rot, and Stud Unit, all being the kings of what they do, skilling PvM and PvP, do you see these clans in the future pretty much controlling their aspect of the game, respectively? You know, om almost as if, like, a player council thing that never ended up happening. Um, I don't think so. I don't think any one clan will ever become that powerful. Like, for skilling, there's... Texas is on top, but Solace isn't that far behind. And, uh, for PVM, there's Stud, and then there's also, uh, Oblivion, which is not that far behind. They're both pretty comparable. And as far as PvP, there's like a billion different PvP clans. Rot is the most well-known, but there's like pure clans and all sorts of other clans too. I don't think it'll ever be one clan that's really on top. But well, I think there'll always be one clan that's on top, but there, I don't think there's ever going to be one clan that has a complete monopoly in any certain area. Okay, I'm going to say with scaling, I think Hexus is on top, and with all the other clans, I think they're evenly distributed. Nobody looks up to like other clans in PVM and PKing. There's like a couple. I say absolutely people will look up in PvP to Rot. Uh, the questions about controlling the game. I thought, like, if you listen to Reddit, that Hexus did control the game. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen uh, quite a few threads of that. Yeah, um, saw someone say that there's no such thing as controlling skilling. Uh, it's quite a really fucking ignorant thing to say. If something comes out that let let's say for example a high effort method comes out and 
it's something that's almost game breaking in how AFK it is. And we don't like it. And we have people complain and it gets changed to not be as AFK. And people get upset about it and blame us for it. Because of the influence that we had on that update. What do you mean that there's no controlling of skilling if we have a direct influence of what updates happen to the game? You know, Pretty like, much all higher level skillers agreed on that though. It wasn't just Texas. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, but... There is a whole lot of, like, even in the PvP community, there's updates with, like, you, you saw all these different, like, quality of life updates for PvP, and I'm sure that the clans in there had a lot to do with that. But, yeah. So, next, um... This is, I think Jicklum submitted this one. So, would you guys play RuneScape Classic if they had a high scores page and botting was a bannable offense? Um, I would be much more inclined to. I don't think I would play it right now because I can't play another account while doing mining, but in the future, probably, I would. Those are the two main reasons that I don't play it and don't think I ever will unless those are changed. Well, I started playing RuneScape just after RuneScape Classic came to an end in the RuneScape 2 beta. And from what I know, Classic is just really a limited and more clunkier version of RuneScape 2. So I don't think it would be realistic for me playing RuneScape Classic, no. Yeah, Classic looks so shit. Uh, yeah. I would not <laughs> want to play it. I'd probably try Classic and bust out like a few 200 mils if there was a high score for it. A few. Yeah. <laughs> What's goes to free time? Well, it doesn't cap at 200 mil in classic. It goes to 536 oh. mil and then goes negative and keeps going up. Holy shit! What? <laughs> yeah, what? I don't think there is any known XP cap on classic. Competent programming. Well, then I just play for fun. Some dude bought it up to that much, thieving XP. That's the only time that anyone's ever gotten that high. Wow. Uh, no, I wouldn't play Classic. It's completely outdated and a piece of shit. Uh, Far too clunky. You can't even run in that game, for fuck's sake. You know, I know that um, good graphics don't make a good game, or vice versa, but, like, it just looks so shit that I don't think I'd enjoy it, and it just... It looks like those, it looks like those games that I used to have on my... Uh, TI eighty seven calculator in high school. <laughs> it, it looks like a. You know what I'm talking about? It looks like a yeah, shittier. It looks like a oh shittier God, version of Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, yeah. It's it's primitive. I'd, I'd rather play Minecraft probably. I think primitive is the best way to describe it. It's interesting <laughs> is to like observe as a precursor to what we now spend all of our lives on. But there's a lot of systems in that game that are just so bad that have been improved upon. Like. We now have banknotes instead of certs. We can trade, like you can note anything instead of being able to just cert certain items. The bank interface is way better. It has a chat box in old school instead of with the shitty tiny little lines of text that you have to click in the top left corner and stuff. But it's still kind of fun to play. Especially questing is interesting because there's so many like grammatical errors in the quests and stuff. But it's fun to see all the gold graphics and everything. It, like, the whole interfaces and how things, like, make a bow and, like, make a potion and things like that, cook a shark or something, I really don't like how that is in Classic. I don't think it would be, like, cutting a tree, you have to spam click the tree, that, yeah. to me, that, that doesn't seem enjoyable, just, like, tying everything around, uh, it just does not look good. Everything in Classic is click intensive and slow. Uh, the only thing that's AFK is combat, from what I remember. There's so much more to it than graphics too. Like, only one person may use the banker at one particular yeah, time. Yeah, only yeah, one stuff person, like that too. Yeah, only one person can talk to an NPC at a time. So when new quests came out, people would queue up in a line to talk to the NPC to get yeah. to certain stages in quests. 
Yeah, Fuck like that. That. I'm going to certain the front. systems are so bad. Things like trading certificates, you could only trade a certain amount of items at a time. It would take you hours upon hours to trade f thousands of items over. You know, yeah. Bibles, Bibles. <laughs> It'll take you hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours, thousands. Go on and on about. Like fire, nooks and crannies. fire making, you had to drop a log and then use a tinderbox on it. Yeah, the best way like to do that. it, I think. Is to combo it with wood cutting because you can only burn regular logs and the XP per log scales with your fire making level. So, Correct. and in classic, if you collect a resource and your inventory is full, it just drops to the ground instead of telling you that you can't. So you just go around chopping trees and then burn the logs. Like once your inventory gets full, it'll automatically drop on the ground. Then you can just burn the logs and combo train it. Another thing too, mining. You had to right click, use your pickaxe, use it on the rock. You could swing and miss. You'd have to repeat that again. With mining, actually, think... mining is like one of the more AFK ones once you got a higher level pickaxe, because the it's higher level your pickaxe, the more attempts it would do in a row. Before, like, it would try and fail, try and fail, try and fail over and over and over again. And the higher level your uh, tool, the higher, like, the more attempts it would do before you had to click back on the rock. It was weird. just doesn't seem like something I'd enjoy. Right. Alright, so... There's gonna be a whole batch of skilling pets, more skilling pets coming out um, at some point in time later on this year. And this is something that we talked about before, was the idea of people who already have 200 mil XP should they be able to just claim the pet? Uh, I don't think so, because if they add more pets in the future, people will be able to get the pets on day one, and that kind of defeats the purpose. So I think you just got to bite the bullet and say you got unlucky. I mean, I can't imagine someone getting 200 mil and actually being... Anyone who's crazy enough to get 200 mil on something probably doesn't care about pets, so... I'm going to say yes, they should be able to get it, but... I'd say, I'm not sure if this is true, if you 3-tick all the way, you don't get the pet, but if that's the that's case, not true. that's not true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, yeah have I think you got a mining it. pet yet, Aubrey? Yeah, I got, yeah, he did. I got beaver 3-ticking, I got mining pet 3-ticking, mm -hmm. fest got heron 3-ticking. You sure you didn't just like, accidentally like AFK one, one log or something? I'm pretty sure the beaver was on a 3-tick. The golem was on a sandstone when I was doing 2S2G, so for that one I wasn't using any tick manipulation to 3-tick it, because you just turn around and you automatically 3-tick it. You only have to do that when you move. Yeah. But I, I really don't think it makes any difference. Just rolls whenever you collect a resource. It wouldn't make sense for it to not work. To kind of raise another question to Trance's point about people being able to get a day one, what if... Um, hypothetically they came out with pets you know and then like a month later if you had 200 mil you'd be able to claim it or something like that would that change your opinion at all or no i mean there's gonna be pets on the day of release for skilling anyways i don't yeah i don't see what the big deal is yeah i don't know it's I'm fine not having any pets from skilling just because I have 200 mil. Like, you're not going to waste your time doing post 200 mil training just to get it. Does the uh, question mean if you're 200 mil, you're guaranteed to get the pet somehow? Like, so you just is... claim it or something like no, that, I guess. I highly disagree. It was our choice, your choice, my choice to get 200 mil in a skill. And, uh, yeah, you just gotta carry on if you want the pen. Or whatever. Maybe if you paid for it, you paid for it. I'd be okay with it. Mm. I'm just yeah, you could, like, be able to claim it from Pobita for like a hundred mil. Fee. I guess, yeah. hundred mil. Yeah. I'm just happy knowing that one day we'll pretty much be guaranteed getting a 200 mil cape, most likely, in the future. Long distant future. Do you think oh, that... Um, uh, go ahead. Wait, is it me? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think yes. I mean, I don't see why. Like, if you have 200 mil of skill, I think you deserve the pet. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really see why you shouldn't be able to get it. Just a pet. Uh, I don't think you should be able to just go and claim it with 200 mil because it just kind of goes against the whole idea of how pets are supposed to be obtained. It's supposed to be RNG based. If you didn't get one, then you're just unlucky. Can you get a pet if you're already 200 mil? Like, does it... I, I don't know. Like, has Pretty sure some, it just rolls whenever someone... you collect a resource. Yeah, okay. I don't know you if know anyone actually any... ever has, though. Yeah, I don't know if anyone who's even post 200 mil tried to get a pet. That'd be unfortunate. Alright. Do you guys think that metal dragons should drop stackable metal scales instead of bars, which can then be converted into bars at a furnace? Well, first things first, who the fuck kills metal dragons? <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people and, do. Like, um, really? I think this is a... I guess it's not a bad idea. I just think it's a pointless idea. But if people want to kill metal dragons, then there's no reason why uh, they shouldn't be able to... Um, they're being smelted into bars. So, like, I still think it's kind of stupid, though, because you still have to smelt them into bars, and who would waste their time doing that? Someone doing souls? Yeah, um... I just don't see really any reason for it. Um, I'm not going to take the, oh, it's inefficient to kill them, so you shouldn't kill them. But it's... I don't really like the idea of them dropping something like that, so for me it's just a no. This is quite a trivial question, but um, I think it's a good idea. I know a lot of people, without evolving efficiency, this is quite a fun task for a lot of people. And I think it's a good idea. Probably benefit Iron Man quite a lot too. But yeah, I'm all for it. Whatever. Um, I actually think this is a great idea. Um, there's actually a lot of people who kill metal dragons, and nobody picks up the fucking bars. Um, and uh, the whole idea of picking up five bars from killing a dragon and, and then baking is kind of outdated. I mean, um, I don't think anybody's ever done it, and people would definitely pick up the scales. Or just make it noted. Just make it noted drops. Yeah, I mean, they can make it like a diary reward, noted dragon, yeah, good noted idea. Uh, bars. I I think no to bars is a better idea. Yeah. yeah. Sounds yeah, a lot better that way. Especially this is the as, same thing, really. Especially as like a diary reward or something like that. Yeah, well, they, the reason they wanted to do the shard or scales or whatever is so that they wouldn't have it be equal to one bar. So there wouldn't be quite as many bars coming into the game. Because it probably would be a lot. Like, cannonballs would probably drop a fair amount, which would be fine with me. Um... I don't really care either way, but I think it would be good to make it so that the bar drops from Metal Dragons are actually usable, because right now it's just... nobody picks them up ever. It's completely pointless. Yeah, so many just disappearing. Okay, I would say if uh, they stack in your inventory and the prices were good, they'd be pretty cool. Because I would make an order and do it on that. in your inventory? Hold yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I guarantee you voted yes to just click your cannon to refresh it instead of pick it up. I didn't vote yet. Jesus. That is bad. That is as easy. Like... Wait, are you saying that bars should be stackable in general? Yeah. Yes, he basically is. But he wants it to just go into his inventory automatically. Yes, yeah, so you can camp there for hours. You got pearl pots or something. Well, hey, why ask? Well, what's why, the why do they go in? Just making them notable. <laughs> and them up? Why do they have to go into your inventory automatically? I'm lazy. Welp. Moving on, then. I don't know what this is, uh, but. What is your guys' opinion on an item similar to herbicide being introduced? Uh, if someone knows what this is, please be assertive enough to 
explain what it is. It's an item in RS3 that you get from... I think it's Dungeoneering, but what it does is it destroys herbs that are dropped on the ground. Uh, you can choose which ones you want it to destroy, and it gives you XP, I think, equal to the XP you'd get for cleaning it or something. So you can just make it destroy all, all, all the herb drops you get other than, like, Renars or whatever else you'd actually want to pick up. So it's, so it's like a bone crusher. XP. Yeah, it's like an herbal or bone crusher, basically. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm already too minimal herb lore. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but really, uh, I really don't think it's a good idea. I mean, there's already so many items that you bring on your Slayer tasks to, to add one more. That's just so so tedious. Um, and it just takes, takes herbs out of the game. Whereas, like, with the Bone Crusher, nobody picks up bones anyways, so it doesn't really have an effect on anything, but... You'd be taking herbs out of the game with this. That's not a good thing, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm I guess you could no. say people wouldn't pick them up if they're using herbicide, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to have to do two and slayer before I do like every other skill. It already is like you have to do it before so many skills, and I just don't see the reason to give more free XP. So it gives pa it gives passive herb XP. You said. Yeah, like it just it's like a bone crusher except for herbal. It just destroys herbs that you get as drops and gives you herbal XP when you kill monsters. But yeah, I like, would, go ahead. I didn't actually have anything to say. I was gonna say I would, uh, I would actually vote yes for this. And I didn't, if I was doing Slayer before Herbler, I would do all the tasks that drop the herbs, so I can save money doing 200 mil herb. If I, because I'm not 100 percent efficient when I play, so that'd be why. Uh, I'd say no. I don't like the idea of adding more passive XP and forcing in order in which you have to do your skills. And also, you already bring enough items to Slayer. I'm alright with uh, passive XPs being added in, but not something like this. To me, it just doesn't really make much sense. Kind of like how Trance was talking about with bones. No one picks up those bones anyway, but people like the... Yeah. Kind of got a really similar opinion to Trance, and I just don't think it would be good. Alright, so if you guys had to train one skill on RuneScape for the rest of your life, which skill would it be <laughs> and why? Uh, I want to say RuneCraft, but then I wouldn't get to spend the money. So, what would be the point? Maybe Agility. I don't, I don't know. Uh. Probably R I don't know, maybe RC. Even though I wouldn't be able to spend the money. Could sell it, right? <laughs> Mine would have to be runecrafting. One of the big, one of my big enjoyments in this game is increasing my capital and making gold. So runecrafting forever. Um, I think I might go with fletching, uh, because it has a lot of XP to be gained. I have arthritis by like twenty-five. <sighs> Well, let's uh, deal with that when it comes. Uh, does Nightmare's own combat count? If so, then that. Okay, I'm going to say agility because I'm really enjoying it at the moment, but that could also be the imbuing too, but I'm going to say agility. i would probably just go with whatever I can AFK the most because realistically the rest of my life, like... That's pretty extreme. I'm happy to train <laughs> certain skills for a while, get them to however much XP I get, maybe 200 mil, but I wouldn't want to train a skill for the next, like, I don't know, fucking 70 years or something, unless it was the most AFK shit ever, and I could just do it while doing other things. Like, that's just a depressing idea. What I like about skills is they do have, an, like, an eventual end, like you have an actual goal. Yeah, I would want just that skill XP, forever. The XP cap is nice. Alright, so what are your guys' thoughts on players who are were being banned, who were attempting to scam items from people, who were accepting donations at the Well of Goodwill? Also, did you donate any money into the Well of Goodwill? And do you think people who collected donations for the Well abused that for publicity 
given that nothing was stopping any of those players from donating it into the well themselves. Um, I, like, obviously I think people should be banned for that. I guess my, if I had a problem with it, it would be that people who scam similar amounts, if not much, much more, don't get banned. Um, and I think, I think, uh, John C. on stream said that he, he perm banned someone for scamming 80 mil or something. Yeah, um, you got people who are admitting. Yeah, like, I have no problem with that. I think he, sh he should be banned, but there's people who scam bills and don't get banned at all. So, I mean, I guess that's if I problem with it. If I had one, and I know I didn't donate anything. But yeah, I agree that they deserve to be banned. Uh, this is supposed to be for charity, and if you're scamming people, I think that's perfectly valid grounds on which to ban someone. I didn't personally donate. But, um, as people saying, uh, collecting donations for publicity, it, it obviously is for publicity, but it also still does help out. Like, if there was no, if there was no one to donate to, um, that would give them any publicity, they probably wouldn't donate in the first place. So even though they're only doing it for publicity, it's still helping out. Yeah, you raised some good points there. Um, kind of agree with Trance's point on like like people shouldn't be I, like. What is the precedent for like you got people who have admitted to buying a hundred mil and they got like a two day or two week I don't fucking know what kind of ban, and then you got someone scamming eighty mil getting perm banned and like. To me, it really just, there is no consistency with that. Um, I don't really care if it, if they were scamming, like, for what was trying to be a fundraiser for charity or not. Um, if someone is not getting perm banned for buying 100 mil, I don't think they should be perm banned for scamming 80 mil. Because uh, that's, like, the precedent was already set, so... I really don't think I'd agree with that. Um, I didn't donate. No. I walked by it and thought for a second. But that was all the thought well, I gave. I, I think scamming's worse than rural trading. Mm. Rural trading, it's a victimless crime. I agree with Trent on that one. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that that criminology class is helping out with your victimless crimes. <laughs> I, I had that opinion for a while. Okay, I'm going to say that if you're stupid enough to trade these people and, and trust them, then you should lose your stuff. And no, they should not get banned for all the other stuff people haven't got banned for. And yes, I did donate. I donated 200 mil. What? That I wanted what? to do right now. What? <laughs> I yielded a hundred, won it, and just donated it. Why didn't you just donate the winnings? I don't know. Fucking hell! Good shit. Oh yeah, I uh... I thought the uh... They deserve to get a ban. Did I donate money? Absolutely not. I'm a selfish piece of shit. <laughs> and, um, exactly! Yeah, I'm only, only being honest. Damn right! <laughs> all, of the like... all of the gold is fucking mine. <laughs> yeah, and I believe that the streamers did it for a mixture of both publicity and also encouraging people to donate. Win-win. Yeah, like, exactly. they, they were helping out. As much as they were helping out themselves, they were helping out. Yeah, they wouldn't have raised as much as they did if it weren't for people like Paul and the friends. Like, they increased the amount that was donated by so much. Last year, it was like, I think it was less than 10 bill last year, and so it was 35 bill or something. It's crazy. It shows in how much inflation has uh, happened over the past year. Also, though, do you think? Yeah, it's weird. Do you think it's weird that they put like a price on like a mill saying like for I I don't know. Yeah, it is a little bit weird, but they can't they couldn't really do it any other way. I don't think it was. What was weird to me is that they 
certain items were so inaccurate, like tridents were 1.4 mil, and they were like 200k in the G. That was really weird to me. I think they like maybe some J mods trying to make some money. I don't know because they they shot up in price a ton because of that. Hmm, interesting. I didn't donate, but I, I, it was over so quickly that I, I was sort of thinking of it, and then it was gone. It was only there for like three days or something. I was expecting it to be there for like a week. I don't know if it was last year, but I feel like it was. I, I remember know. I remember that before when someone wanted to go. Uh, I don't know if it was like this this year, but last year, if you went to the Well of Goodwill with, say you had a uh, 100 mil on you and you wanted to donate um, 10 mil, like you wouldn't like it would take your entire cash stack. Yeah, there's some dude on Reddit who donated a bill, think he was thinking he was donating like a mill or something. Yeah, well, th so that it was multiplied by a thousand again this year. Uh, yeah, I saw a Reddit post like during the Well of Goodwill this year about Fucking that. Hell, scammed by a charity. That's another reason why I don't donate to charity because, in all honesty, we don't really know where our money goes, do we? I don't know. I don't. I don't trust them motherfuckers. Yeah, it's kind of true. Monkey Madness 2 has uh, passed the poll, and with it is coming this new jewelry, which is Zentai. I, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's got... Whoa, whoa, it's not a type of porn. What? <laughs> I don't know of any porn that, that's called that. <laughs> Zenite? Zenite. Zenite, I think. Zenite? Yeah, I was, I was going with Z-Night. I don't know. Z-Night or Z-Night. What did I say? Zente. You said Zente. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said Zentai. Zentai, Zentai. Oh, hell. <laughs> Alright. But with it is a new best-in-slot tank ring, a best-in-slot range, best-in-slot magic and melee jewelry. And a ballista weapon. Um, what do you guys think of the rewards? What do you think about the quest? Break it down for you. What are your thoughts? So, I'm really excited for Monkey Madness 2. It took them, what, three years for them to give us a quest. Finally, we're getting it. Yep. And um, I believe that the jewelry is quite balanced, in my opinion. For example, the Amulet of Torture is the new best in slot, melee amulet, but it doesn't give defense and it gives less prayer than an, than an amulet of fury, for example. Uh, I just hope that they make the jewelry mix well with the other armors, like the Fury does. You know. Yeah, Fury also, looks so good, especially exactly. With it mixes so well with the other armors, and uh, Ballista. I don't know. That probably just looks like some useless side shit for the quest. And all in all, I'm quite happy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really happy about the quest. It's been way, way too long without a quest in old school. I understand the reasons for it because quests aren't really the most efficient use of dev time in terms of how much playtime the content gets, but still, I'm really glad that there's finally a quest coming out because it's fun to have a quest every so often and get the experience of a new quest like Dave released and everything. Um, I think they will do a good job with it, uh, especially with you know Kieran and all of them working on it. And as far as the jewelry, it seems fairly well balanced, almost to the point of not really be worth being worth using, especially the melee amulet. I really can't see why you'd want to use it. It's only two higher strength and a little bit higher accuracy than Fury, and you lose on all that prayer bonus. It's only um, like a three prayer bonus. Yeah, but that's fairly significant, I don't know. And like the bracelet will be useful, the bracelet will be best in slot for Zolra instead of Barrow's gloves. Some of the other things will be a bit useful. It's nice that they're finally doing a range-specific uh, necklace slot item. It was kind of weird to have Fury best in slot for both. And it's nice that Barrow's Gloves are no longer best in slot for everything. So I think it's pretty good. The Ballista is probably going to be shit because they didn't even pull it because it wasn't like best in slot for anything. So it's probably just going to be dead content and Javelins are still going to be dead content. Um, I like the balancing... I like most of the balancing on the jewelry pieces. Um, one thing I don't like is how... I think they should take the prayer bonus completely off of the necklace because... Um, I don't know. It's. I think the necklace is... I know it's not like a big upgrade, but I think they should make it have zero prayer 
So you actually have to make the whole sacrifice of all the prayer bonus for the two strength or whatever it is. Um, the necklace will be worth using, but the prayer bonus is kind of a big deal. Um, on like a black demon task, it might actually affect uh, if you can do 250 black demons in uh, yeah. one trip. You might have to bring like your Falador shield or something. But other than that, uh, I think the Ballistas are... I, I don't think they'll be used at all. They need to have like some sort of... Like... Like, redu like reduce your opponent's defense to one for like the next hit or some something like that. Because if it's just... Because the Dark Bow is going to hit higher, so... And so will uh, Bolts, probably. They're going to do some sort of special ability where like... Um, the next hit after you hit with the Belisa special attack, your opponent's defense is effectively one or something like that. So you just have really low defense for the next hit. My idea. So you can like use it to set up a spec or something. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds really fucking overpowered, though. Yeah, but you'd expect it if you're on the receiving end of it, because you know that the Belisa coming, they're gonna do something crazy. I guess you're right. I don't know shit about PvP. Um, I'm happy that we're finally getting a new quest. Even though I'm not a big fan of quests, I think the game needs them, and it's about time that they actually uh, are making one. As for the items, I haven't really followed the development of them too much, but from what I've seen, they seem pretty well balanced. Like, I, haven't, I don't think there are any major issues with the proposed stats. I really like how it's balanced in terms of the whole, you know, like you sacrifice all of your defense for all of your defense and half of your prayer for plus two strength. The, the tank ring, the everything about it, I think, is really well balanced. And I think one thing one thing that none of us had mentioned is that it uses an onyx. So, like, it maintains the value of that. And yeah, I think that's kind of just a given at this point, but it's good that they did that. Yeah. I'm wondering what the tank ring will be used for. Like, maybe, I would think tanking Bandos and Sammy, but would it be used for anything else, really? Probably the raids in the future. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about that. Good point. You guys alright with uh, peers not being able to do it? Yes. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a flying fuck. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. Other than people, like, people who have high defense or things like that, I haven't heard anyone, other than people who it negatively affects, say that, hey, you know, it's, peers should be able to do this. People are, either they don't care or what have you. Like, eh. I don't know. Like, no one is standing up, even though it doesn't negatively affect them. It'd be fucking stupid if they designed the boss around being able to kill- being able to be killed with one defense, because it should be a hard boss. Should be an interesting quest boss fight. They haven't catered updates towards peers in the past, and I don't think they should start now. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to change around the way Monkey Madness works right now. If it was, if there was no requirements related to defense as it is right now, I think it'd be fine. If they didn't like intentionally make it so peers couldn't do the quest because of a defense XP reward, but they'd have to make the boss designed for mains and just be hard for peers. But because of the fact that you have to get defense XP to finish Monkey Madness, there's no reason to change that. Alright, what do you guys think of all of the quality of life updates that are currently being pulled? Most of them are passing with flying colors, but things like the right click to refresh your cannon, um, like buy necklace having 16 charges, and everything else that they're being pulled. You know, what, what are you guys' thoughts on these? Um, I can't think of all of them, but most of them seem pretty good. I was thinking that the binding necklace would make runecrafting faster, but I didn't realize that it 
won't, um, because you could just do a, you could use up three charges one run per necklace, and it would still like you'd still get the full XP for every craft. I was thinking that you just have to get half XP every second craft of your eighth run. So it really is just quality of life for that, which is kind of nice. Cannon is probably good. I mean, I don't really care that much. Having to pick up and reset your cannon is kind of stupid, so... I, I can't remember any of the other ones, but I voted yes to most of it, I think. Um, I would say that I like that they're putting the effort into mid quality of like updates, because they've been slacking in the past. I would say the binding necklace one should not be implemented. Because it's just going to make runecrafting way too much fa faster than it should be. It doesn't affect and the rates at all. Didn't you listen to what he, he said? Doesn't it? Was, no. no, it doesn't. Huh. Okay. And for the Slayer one, I think that's a great one because it's annoying to pick up and put down your cannon, especially when you have a full inventory. Uh, that, well, te you technically the binding necks help a little bit because you save an inventory something. slot like every 30 laps or some shit. Yeah. No, what you can do is just... Uh, one run per necklace. Scott Wilson pointed this out to me on Twitter. Craft once, empty one pouch, craft again, empty one pouch, craft again. So it wastes like one tick or something, but that'll use up three charges. So that way you'll just do, you'll use a necklace every seven runs. So it saves you like a tiny bit of money to be able to use one every eight runs. Well, you wasted well, a tick though, so. Yeah, you wasted a it, tick. It helps a little bit. It makes it, definitely makes it a lot easier. Yeah, it makes um, it a little bit easier. Uh, I don't like the cannon th thing, unless they make it take longer, but it already takes a long time. I can't imagine them making the right-click reset actually take longer than picking it up and setting it back down. I think that that right-click cannon is fucked, and I imagine yeah, it'll, I don't, I don't like I imagine it'll like... take a just right-click, uh, scroll down, refresh cannon, done. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're also doing the lizard men task? That could be a, I think that should be a really good task. They're multi-combat, and you can cannon, if I'm not mistaken. So. Especially if Warhammer's being like 60 milit or something like that. Yeah, they're not it... going to kill the fucking shaman. So it would apply to both shaman and the regular ones? Uh, probably, yeah. 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 There was one I that be... I voted no to, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Oh, giant hell rats sounded fucking stupid. <laughs> they these could be fought by your cat to receive a guaranteed drop of four doses of whichever spice you want. Like what? This yeah. makes it so much easier to get plus five boosts. I don't understand that in the past. Trans, I'm pretty sure the shamans could be GP efficient for us though, seems we don't use ults for GP. The hammer's like one in three thousand though. Or like one five thousand, I think. Yeah. Oh is it that? oh Jesus. Yeah, it's like really rare. Oh shit, yeah. my bad. Very, very well. Um, I think that the right click cannon to refresh it is like it's not needed. Like, who is suggesting something like that? I don't understand why that's something that we need or should be pulled. Um, I see on here that there's um, like ha adding in more graceful color kits. That's... I don't know why people like it so much. Graceful I... is fucking ugly. It always will be. Yeah, I, I don't they, really like they need that. to bring back uh, a color kit for the classic graceful. I I would like that. I would. Yeah, I think I would probably wear it. I'd pay I'd pay a couple mil for that for sure. Also, we're gonna be able to get multiple copies of achievement diary items, which I'm really glad about. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. Well, that's kind of good then. Yeah, it'll cost a small fee. I imagine it's pr gonna be pretty low then. Yeah, it's like probably gonna 10K. cost. The same. It said Purdue will sell these, so it's probably gonna be the same price as reclaiming them from him. That's pretty good then. That that's a nice quality of life update. Yeah, I can finally have my Varrock armor and my Desert Amulet as placeholders next to my other stuff for mining. I think the uh, right click refresh cannon is kind of silly if we're really gonna take it to that step. It may as well just not decay at all. To yeah, be if it never I... decayed, though, it would just stay forever. Like, if you logged out... If you, right now, if you log out, your cannon stays until it decays. See. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the right-click cannon at all. It's just people being lazy. And But if, if they do implement it, I think the proper way to do it would be make it take um just as long or a tick longer than picking it up like the way you do right now and yeah to make slayer it the same spoons, i don't see what the issue is with it 
on Slayer streams, you'd have people uh, saying, why don't you right-click the cannon? Didn't you know you can do that? And that would be funny. <laughs> God damn it. Now we're going to stream Slayer again. I don't know. There's a couple updates that really just don't seem necessary at all. Uh, oh, um, something that I don't think is on the um, podcast format at all is the loot share is gonna is uh, failing. I think this this is the third time that loot share has <laughs> been pulled and failed. Uh, doesn't look like that's ever gonna come. Yeah, they just kept making it worse. I think that charge share or implementing a good coin share would have been the best solution, but the way that they proposed it this time was even worse than before. It was like pretty much the same thing as just not having loot share at all, if you actually thought about it. It's really stupid. Yeah, alright. So question that someone asked is uh, do you have any tips for newbies who are just trying to get into playing efficiently that just go to Aubrey's YouTube channel it's, uh... hey. <laughs> <laughs> plug it yourself go ahead take it away uh, search autumn elegy watch all of my videos leave lots of likes but I do have some guides about skilling efficiency and stuff if you want to check them out yeah, it's really the easiest way of getting into it is knowing what you're doing, and he's got videos that pretty much break down mostly anything that you would, someone who's just trying to begin getting into it would need to know. All I can say is, a great player called Zezema once said, make most of the time that you have. Don't bank stand and do nothing. Don't waste time. If you have school, college, or a job, when you have time to play RuneScape, make most of the time and don't XP waste. Set realistic goals for yourself and don't give up. Yeah, that's good advice. Try to be as efficient as you possibly can. Like, you don't have to play a lot of hours to be efficient. So many people seem to think that. Indeed, consistency is the key. Efficiency is just making the most out of whatever time you have. Indeed. Okay, I would say if you're starting off, you should watch some guides, and then once you get familiar with that, and try out skills, and then if you find ones you like, just do that, and don't listen to other people, just do what you feel comfortable doing, and manage your time very well if you have other responsibilities. That's, yeah, that's a really good one, like, don't let other people, uh, as much as people wanna may want to bully you into changing your play style, if you're playing efficiently and you're having fun, continue doing that. Yeah, because if you follow other people, you might burn out quicker. Alright, so there was a 2K world that got added. World 49 has been changed. Uh, it's a UK world. 2K total. Uh, it wasn't something that was pulled. Just something that they said, fuck it, we're going to do it. Uh, it took the place of what was a, the tournament world. So now we've got two tournament world or not tournament, two 2K total worlds. How do you feel about it? I think it's probably good, but then it begs the question of why isn't there a German one, and then why isn't there one for every other uh, tier, which would be too many total level worlds, but it would probably stop people complaining about it at least. I wish they would add a higher level requirement total world also though. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's nice that they did it, especially without pulling it. Obviously I'd rather have seen maybe a max world, but it's good, and actually one thing I've noticed, I'm not sure if it's related directly to this, but the 2k world has been shit in terms of latency yeah. for a long time, it's and really recently, bad. like recently, um, it seems to have improved a bit, so maybe there's some relation there. Yeah, I remember Trance had said that he is no longer having those lags. No, no, it gets, it gets, like, I've noticed... On Thursdays, it's fine, but progressively throughout the week, it gets worse. I tried it <clears throat> like an hour really? ago, it was fucking terrible. Really? That's weird. Yeah. It must be like storing some information or something weird like that. Is, that also happens with Castle Wars worlds. When we were boosting Castle Wars, it would be great for the first like three or four days after a Thursday. 
and then so many worlds would break, like worlds would gradually just break and then you can't use them for boosting. And by like Sunday or Monday there weren't enough to be able to even do it. Something must be going on like behind the scenes that does weird stuff like that. I don't know, because like Ash said, he wasn't seeing anything that may have been causing any issues like that. So it's really, I haven't been on 61 uh, in a long time just because of the lag issues that I've had on it. Uh, yeah, same with me. I know that there's going to be so many people who are slaying that have got to be ecstatic about a new 2K Total World. Yeah, that's true. I didn't yeah, think that's, about that. That's a huge thing. Because, uh, you know, like this kind of happened, um, like the day it happened like a few hours before um ash was talking to a lot of people on twitter about like max worlds and 2.2k total worlds and i went to bed i woke up and then we had like that 2k like i think that a lot of player feedback is responsible for this one being added in for sure and i like it you know like Better for <laughs> the people that have 2K total. Probably good for Hunter too. Black Chins. Um, I wouldn't really say that because like there's never really a time at Black Chins where it's so overcrowded you have to hop because of how crowded it is. And like if really? someone's PKing, like if they can get in the into the 2k total world they'd go to both they wouldn't just not hop to the other that's true unless they found somebody to kill i've been busy for a while but i thought it was busy on the 2k world at black chains nah not really surprising maybe lag has something to do with it though possibly trance oh, i'll pass um, I have no idea why they added the 2K UK world in about pulling it. It still baffles me. But uh, I have no complaints, obviously. I've been wanting a 2K world that's from the UK because the USA 2K world is just unplayable for me. I have a one second or so delay on my clicks on that world, so I'm happy with it. No idea why they added it in without pulling it, though. What I think of it is, I think it's uh, spreads out, because like Rick was saying, the lag on it, on the US was pretty bad, so it spreads that out for the people who have 2K total, and also for the people who want to feel special in the 2K world, they can spread them out more instead of all cluttered in one world, trying to fight for a spot at Chins or Slayer or something. You think it's okay that they did it without pulling it? Because no. they did have to they did pull the other worlds like when they originally were added. I'm kinda glad that they're taking steps in that direction towards not pulling everything. Because it's really fucking annoying to see like the tiniest little updates get pulled and certain little things fail just for no reason. Like I think they should pull major updates, but I think that they don't have to go so overboard with pulling the way that they have in the past. Yeah. Um, the community is not always right about what's best for the game. So on Jagex. Yeah, that's true. But Hexus is. <laughs> that's also true. <laughs> Jesus, I knew I knew someone was gonna say that. All right. So um, in this upcoming up, in this Thursday update is gonna be being able to host yourself in Nightmare Zone. Uh, picking what bosses you want to kill without needing a booster. Do you like this shit or nah? Yeah, I think it's about time they did this. It really should have been a feature from the start. And I'm glad that I'll finally be able to do Nightmare Zone without having to wait for... Sometimes I have to wait nearly half an hour for someone. Although I do want to give a shout out to Hexus Demon. <laughs> who's been around recently. Who is Hexus members. Demon? <laughs> like, whoever hey. you are, like, thank you. Hey, Hexus Demon is some... We don't know who he is, but, like, uh, I know that Zoid was saying 
that like he logged in world 30 and was looking for he was looking for someone to host him and then like hex's demon just invited him to a match like he didn't like hex's demon initiated it with him what yeah like just ran up to him and like said here i'm hosting you let's go yeah i think he has all hex's members at it (laughs) (laughs) i we don't know who he is it's quite it's a mystery hilarious Fantastic. Yeah, yep, yeah, I think this. A- and that. Andrew Wiggins saying Hex's demon gave him twenty free hosts. Yeah. He is a uh... <laughs> great guy. Um. All right, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was saying uh, I think the Nightmare Zone update, which is coming, is a fantastic update. Gets rid of a lot of bots, and it's a f- it's a formidable gold sink to the game. Yeah, it's good. I mean, anything, I don't know. I, I just hate Nightmare Zone in general. So, yeah, but it's good. It's a good update. Um, They should have done this a long time ago, honestly. Yeah. Is it, Nightmare Zone is out for, like, what, two years now? Or is it over two years? Two and over a two half. Years. Yeah. Yeah, they should have done this. If only like, it was never released. Soon, as soon as they realized that boosting was being botted, and abused, they should have added this. I know, it's, it's been so bad. It would have been a great goal for so thing. long. There's not really anything positive that's really come out of it for the game as a whole. But, alright. So, someone asked, um, what are your guys' plans on doing to the clan statue, and what did the email that Ronan sent to me say? Uh, so yeah, uh, this took a very long time, and I... Brandy, we agreed to uh, dress it in full gilded, didn't we? Spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty much going to stay the way it is. Um, now, one thing here, you know, I, I know that in my approval ratings video, I talked about how a lack of communication on Ronan's part has been disappointing. Um, in his email, he said, oh, you know, like, congratulations, guys. Um, if you're getting this email, your clan has won at least two years in a row. And something that we're going to be doing to your statue is, like, um, like the stone part of it is going to be, like, changed to, like, some kind of marble to, like, indicate, hey, you guys have won it more than once. So that's, cool. that's that's something that they're doing, and then they said to message like respond with what kind of things that you would like done to your statue, and then he said he would run it by the graphics artist and let us know if it would be possible or not. I saw John C say today on Twitter that this Thursday the clan statues were going to be updated. I told Ronan that I would like for us to have a max cape and hood and for us to have a greenish blue bird added above our head (laughs) like all of the other items that are up there Uh, apparently this update's coming on thursday but ronin didn't run it by the artists and get back to us on if it would be possible or not so kind of just gotta wait and see what's up with that so Hopefully, hopefully it gets done the way that we asked, because he didn't tell us yes or no. Oh uh, yeah, no reindeer hat. The reindeer hat is obsolete. Oh. All right. So what do you? There were uh, there was a player, maybe players who were banned for harassing other people. Um, but what do you guys, you know, like, what do you guys think about people being banned for harassing and ruining their gameplay? Do you think it's justifiable? What would be kind of your standard for what you would set for getting banned for harassing? I think people who, like, systematically harass people and go out of their way in Hop Worlds to do it should be banned, but I don't think... Um, but I've seen plenty of people do that and not be banned. Um, I don't know if it's like 
they only banned them because it happened on the stream and they had video evidence. Um, I don't, I don't know what kind of evidence they could actually look at without someone actually recording it. So maybe that's the reason why people who have crashed me in the past or crashed Randy in the past or anyone else haven't really been banned. But uh, I think, I think, I think the bans are justifiable. I would say people who get banned deserve to be banned because if you go to your way to destroy someone's gameplay, that's not fair. And also, if you uh, see Emily, just hop right away. Don't even bother. She'll ban you instantly. She's got good connections. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that... I don't know that much about it, so I can't say for sure, but it sounds like those bans probably were justified, but... There are a lot of people that haven't gotten banned that should be, and I feel like banning the people crashing Emily first is just a terrible decision on their part, because unless they're completely living under a rock, they know that many people fucking hate Emily and will bitch about it constantly. Um, they should have banned the people crashing people like Sig and MMORPG doing solo corp on Iron Man, because that's a much bigger deal, I think, and it's people who are actually generally well-respected. But in general, yeah, if you're if you're consistently going out of your way to be a dickhead for no reason in the game, then I think you deserve a ban. Um, as long as there's actual evidence of it and everything, which there have been cases of where people haven't gotten banned. Would you be okay with, um, you, know, you remember that one time where you were streaming mining and there was like four or five people that kept hopping yeah. around? <laughs> like, do you think they should have been permanently banned? If they kept doing it consistently, yes. They only did it for one stream, so I'm not really too bothered. But if they kept doing it like constantly every single stream, then yeah, I mean, it would make it so that I couldn't stream mining, which would be pretty shit. So I think they would deserve to get banned. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be a fuck, you should be banned. Uh, I don't give a fuck if it's who it's to. You should not be going out of your way to ruin someone's gameplay. And think that's okay. Um, sure, you might be having laughs and whatnot, trying to get a reaction out of people, but you shouldn't be playing this game. Or sh you shouldn't be allowed to play this game if you are crashing people uh, just for the purpose of crashing. And you are consistently doing it time and time again. Um, to everyone who has ever put a flower under my fire, I wish you the worst hell <laughs> no, but uh, like if if you go out of your way and are looking to crash a single person over and over and over again, I think that you should be banned. Um, not more like if you crash everyone, like let's say you're you and your buddy are some two PVMers. And like you go to a boss and you see other people there and you crash like you crash anyone. I don't think that that should be something that one should be banned for or anything like that. You know, like, if you're targeting a player and just trying to be a fuck like that, uh, I think that should definitely get that ban. Um, also, shout out to that dude who did get, uh, perm was it permanently banned for harassing? I don't know. I, don't I think know. it was, yeah. Uh, he got permanently banned for harassing, but he is the victim of this because had Jagex actually permanently banned this bitch for real world trading, <laughs> he never would have had the opportunity to harass her. Blame Jagex. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that there's a difference between like crashing, you know, solo Rex or DKs because you can't find a world, or crashing somebody at Bandos because you can't find a world. And just like straight ragging people like you're doing that because you don't really have much other choice It might still be kind of a dick move But there's a difference between that and like intentionally doing something that doesn't benefit you at all And it's only for the sake of harming one person or other people like if you if you're always crashing different people But it's still with the same Intentions, I think you still deserve a ban, but it'd probably be harder to get somebody like that banned Yeah, so I think that persistent harassment should definitely be banned but these bans and really all bans that they hand out need to be handed out uniformly and consistently like if you're going to ban someone for doing it you should ban everyone who does it and the other point is as everyone else mentioned it is the case of persistent harassment when you're actually targeting a, a person and trying to um, 
ruin their enjoyment of the game, not just crashing, because if it was just banning for crashing, and I could never train Slayer again. Yeah, like, crashing on a Slayer test shouldn't get you banned. Kind of shitty, but sometimes it's necessary, especially if you have some idiot just taking up a space when he doesn't need to. If you don't have a cannon, you deserve to be crashed by <laughs> everyone. Don't Preach. slay without. Don't slay. <laughs> don't slay without a cannon. Or if what about you are, Iron Man, though? if you are slaying without a cannon, please fuck off to the non-efficient areas of that task. Like it there are no blood veils in the Slayer Tower. Yeah, I know exactly. And you get better XP on them if you have more Tainted Diary done, anyways. Slayer Tower creatures. Like if you're at blood veils, use like the south room or something. Don't dick around in the. East or west. Use a cannon, man. Alright, so... Which skills do you think are the most neglected? And what kind of suggestions do you have on how to improve them? Uh, well, construction hasn't seen an update other than optimizing load time for POHs that I can remember. Uh, fire making hasn't had an update, I don't think. Um, I don't think woodcutting hasn't had an update either, other than, like, infernals, which I guess is kind of a fire making update, but... Yeah, I don't know, I think that it would be good to have more construction content, which is coming this year. Um, and <laughs> fire making... I forget when it was, but Matt Kay was talking about the uh, idea that he had for fire pits, which sounds exactly like bonfires when you think about just the word, but his description of it was completely different, and I thought it was a pretty good idea, because it wasn't, it wasn't a training method, it was just a use for the skill. Like, it just had various like little perks for doing different fire pits. I forget that much about it, but it sounded actually pretty good when he was talking about it. I was surprised. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that any skills really need to be updated. Um... I think I've talked about this before. I think like fire making and wood cutting could go for some sort of mini game alternative way to train them. Um, not efficient, but just something like a little of mine um, sort of efficiency where you you know people people will do it, um, but it's not efficient type of thing. Yeah, I can see like that. that's when you know you have a good update when it's not efficient and people still do it. Yeah, like mud of mine is a great update. Agreed. I'd rather it not be in the game. Okay, I got two suggestions. One could be for agility, a higher level course at maybe 95. And I would suggest Yanile for it. And for Hunt, I'd say Hunter for the next one. I'd suggest White Chinchampas, and I'd put them in the polar area for maybe level 90. What kind of XP? Would they have the same? Now, let me ask. Would they have like the same catch rate as black and red? Yes. Okay. Probably. Maybe a 10% increase on blacks, so a little higher. XP rates. Okay, good shit. And for the agility, I'd say it caps at 70. Okay. I'm gonna I don't say think we really need either of those, I don't know. Yeah. I guess find the way it is. I'm gonna say the same as the rest of you guys. I think fire making needs a, an update. It's not had... I don't think it's had one update whatsoever, has it really? Uh, it's no. had indirect... Not directly. Up yeah, no. it's, had, it's had indirect updates that have increased its XP per but, hour. And but no please. content, right? No actual content, correct. But I believe that in the next batch of Zare, something to do with that fire pits in the game. Something to do with that. What about Hunter? I think Hunter's trained a, a fair amount. I think Hunter deserves higher level content, not new training methods, but new like relevant content for in some way, because it caps at 83, which is kind of low. Yeah, that's right. If it's Golden Chin Chumpers, that'd be great. <laughs> nah, yeah. Next. Yeah, I pretty much agree with everyone else. Uh, fire making has been the most neglected skill. And it would be nice if they could do some sort of update. Maybe it's a mini game. Maybe just another training method, which is mostly AFK, but gives really low XP per hour and costs less than normal fire making. So that like all the people who don't want to spend money would do it. It would just make fire making more of a crap skill than it already is. 
I don't know. I, I think fire making's all right. I, I don't know why a lot of you guys feel differently about that. I I think that fire making's fine. I think if something should be updated, you know, I'd like to see. How about prayer? You know, that has not had a single update to it either. Necromancy uh, spellbook. Wait, wait, wait. Let me. Huh? Necromancy. Yeah. Reanimate heads. Whatever the fuck it is. Mm. Unless you do manual prayer, it's way better to do uh, necromancy. I guess I was taking that more of uh, prayers that can be used instead of the training method for it. Oh, right. Yeah. My bad. Um... And then I'll say farming, you know, like, give us more patches. Like, Zaya is fat as fuck. Why is there no patch worth a damn there? All they gave us was a spirit tree patch. There's an yeah, herb patch on really. there. Herbs well, there's the minigame, too. Well, the minigame is really bad. I would like to see, like, a tree patch, a fruit tree patch. I would like to see either higher level trees and fruit trees, or making things like hops and bushes and flowers more relevant. Like trees are fine, but it, it, and we've had like a lot of new patches since release. To be honest, I, I heard uh, most uh, of farming is dead. Mod Mike K say that in the next patch of Zaya, he might try and give us redwood trees. What we had for uh, what was that skill called? They're gonna come out with Artisan. Hard yeah. Hard yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, he was going to try and put redwood trees into the game, which means redwood seeds, most likely. I mean, it w I wouldn't... The redwood shit wouldn't really be worth anything, though. Like, you're not too ticking redwoods. They might do that unintentionally put a monster there. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really think that that's going to be their thought process when they put it in. Like, they're just going to say, oh, you know, woodcutting here, it's an update, but it's not going to change the meta game whatsoever. It'll just be a new fucking log for people to AFK Fletch for an hour until they get their next level. Let's move it on. might be better fire making XP, though, than magic. Ah, I guess that's something I didn't think about. Yeah, indirect fire making update. Yep. I guess it doesn't sound too bad then if it would be giving a new best in slot, or not best in slot, a new best log. Could Could be farming XP. Though. Could be farming XP too if they bring out redwood seeds. Oh, yeah, so I feel like that, they don't necessarily that... have to. Like there's no teak seeds or mahogany seeds if they decide to make them like a plank tree or something. True, yeah. I mean, I'm fine with magics and palms and calquats being the only things that are done. I don't think that they necessarily need to have a higher tiered seed. I think they should revive brewing. That would be incredible. It would make hops relevant, it would make trouble brewing relevant, and it would bring interesting new... It would make, like, brewing as a whole relevant, since that, like, brewing is kind of like a minigame unto itself, and then trouble brewing is a minigame that would affect brewing. They made ales, like higher level ales that were actually useful, then it could become, it could revive a whole lot of content in one go. Yeah, there's a lot of potential in that just because of how much dead content there is involved with that. Alright, hold on. Alright, so... Another kind of skill-related question. What skills do you think could benefit from a level cap of 126 instead of 99 and why? The person who submitted this said, Don't be a closed-minded bitch. <laughs> the consistency of level caps is not important. Um, well, yeah, first of all, I wouldn't want skills to go up to past 99 in terms of like the actual displayed level, but... There, I was thinking about this before the stream, I think there are four skills that have content at level 99, uh, which are runecrafting, construction, farming, and smithing. Especially smithing could definitely keep going, because 
like having 99 be crafting rune items that you use at level 40 defense is kind of stupid if you're thinking about the game in terms of like actually using your skills uh rune crafting could potentially go higher and have doubles and higher level runes like double deaths or something at a really high level so i could see that but i still like wouldn't want them to go past 99 Uh, I think for me, like, the the first thing that came to mind was combat, you know, like, just because of how easy it would be, uh, to just, like, you, you hit higher as a result. Really yeah, you could have, like, 149 or something combat, I think. That fucking ridiculous. Uh, that, to me, seems like it'd be something really easy to add in, for sure. Actually, let me check that. Combat would probably benefit the most, but I think uh, all the gathering skills would also benefit because the rate at which you uh, your catch rate would increase with your level as well. Oh shit, max combat level is 157 if it went up to 126. Wow. Motlickies and Uno Dedo both would have it. Yeah, skills like strength, runecrafting. Uh, and HP even, things like that would uh, benefit a lot, but I, this is old school at the end of the day, and I believe that 99 should always be the maxed level. Yeah, they could, like, if they made gathering skills go that high, it would just mean that XP rates would get way faster, and devalue a lot of things. Alright, uh... Someone asked, uh, would we ever consider doing a Hexes podcast with everyone on a face cam? I know this has been something that a lot of people have been asking for a long time. I've got some good news here. Trickle has bought a webcam, <laughs> and the next Hexes podcast will be with the face cam. I promise I will make it happen. Damn. Sweet. So, yeah, next Hexes podcast will have a face cam, so... Uh, gotta make sure we don't pick our nose or anything like that. <laughs> Next Texas podcast will face cam first one. So, all right. So moving on then. Um, would you want to make? All right. So this is something that I think Rig and I were talking about in TS a couple days ago. But, yep. Uh, left click to empty your pouches for room crafting. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't like it. I think it's just lazy. And on top of that, this was asked in the Q and A, and uh, Ash said it's like actually a, a huge engine job to do it. So would it really be worth it? Wasting all our time just to do this? Probably not. Yeah, they can't have right click options be uh, non static on items or anything. I would welcome the update because. I don't think it would increase XP rates, would it? Because no, it would just make, no. It, no. Yeah. It, would just make people, it a bit more convenient. A lot of uh, people don't ring, like empty their pouches as efficiently as they can. I don't notice that many people would do. Yeah, same here. But it would just take away from the skill, I think. Yeah, Madash said that he would have to edit a lot of hidden interfaces in the game. And I would rather development time be spent elsewhere. But I would welcome the update if it comes in the future. I think it's pointless. It's not going to affect the skill at all. You don't need AHK to empty your pouches in one tick. But so it's, it's really a, little, a pointless a update. Of life. I don't think yeah, that's a good point. I, I don't think it's really pointless. Uh, I can definitely see why a lot of people would like something like this. I don't really see anything wrong with it either. I'd support it. But obviously, the... All the work that would be required wouldn't be something that would be realistic. So this isn't anything that we could ever hope to have. But, all right, so here we are. Kind of getting near the end of the podcast here. So if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat and we will try to answer a few of them. But let's move it on here. So what skill have you guys been doing throughout the podcast. I have been doing mining. I've been doing agility. And just one thing to add, 
I do not set myself goals, so don't ask me how long I'm going to be training it for. Trance? Uh, I've been in room crafting, uh, natures. What happened to um, you saying that you didn't want to take advantage of uh, the market? I didn't, I, I didn't say I sold them yet. <laughs> All right, that's that's fair. All right, um, I've been hunting the whole time, and it's uh, it's red shins chilling. I've been doing crafting natures the whole time. We'll be doing so for 75 more rune crafting XP, and after that, I'll probably move on to buyables, maybe construction or prayer. He's 75 more room or 75 mil. Yes. Yes, what? Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'm going for 75 mil rune craft XP. Uh oh. <clears throat> are, are you guys one and two in terms of uh, rune craft XP max player? Yes, we are. That's pretty good. Wait, what'd you say? One and two, rank one and two, uh, RuneCraft XP max player. Oh. Yeah, Trance is rank one, I'm rank two. Which I guess is it's quite a filter on it, but is what it is. Um, well, I started off by training crafting since I had about 40 days of battle stab saved up. Gosh. And now I'm doing cooking. 40 days of battle staffs. Hey, God bless the price of battle staffs. Like, you, you yeah, make, what's like, up with those? Make like five mil a month from that shit now. I, I don't Holy know. Fuck. I, I remember, I remember the good old days back when Johnny would sell me those staffs at like seventy nine hundred each. But they've uh, really gotten fucked up since. Um. Hey, no, nah, there there will be podcast, or I'm sorry, there will be face cams in next um, next podcast. There will be face cams. Trickles got one, so we've got no excuses now. And you know, I don't know who's going to be on the next one, but that'll be that'll be something a lot of fun. But yeah. Uh, New tinder boxes for more XP. I wouldn't really. I don't really like the idea of a different tinder box. Like a, let I me mean, call it like a gold tinder box or something. Now, if any, if yes, any, please. if any, if anything, I like the idea more of a new tree that has a uh, better log for fire making. But uh, not really seeing much else here. Does anyone have anything? They wanted to add in before the end here. No? All right. Not really. Well, the next Texas podcast should be, or it will be March 20th. Um, with face cams. With March 20th with face cams, yeah. Look for it to be... Somewhere around like 1 to 5 p.m. EST. Somewhere around there. I'll be posting on my Twitter and keeping up, giving updates about when that's about to be. Uh, for those of you guys who watched the YouTube video of this, thank you for staying with the whole time. Uh, I tried to do timestamps here, so my apologies if they weren't as close and as accurate as they should have been. And... And let me just do one giveaway here. Um, I'll give away three months of OS Buddy Pro to a random person who is a subscriber and comments on this YouTube video. But all right, gonna be ending it here. I'm selling out, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bless.